everybody, good day to you and welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I know, I'm super glad to be here. Uh, we are joined today by this blue and color 2016 Doge Ramicus 1500. It's got the 5.7 liter V8 uh, customer states exhaust noise on startup. And uh, we heard like a wispy rattle, tickety tick tick noise, uh, which uh, primarily sounded like it was coming from uh, over here on the passenger side. I've got a sneaky suspicion that it has a uh, broken exhaust manifold bolt or bolts uh, or even possibly a cracked exhaust manifold. So what we're going to do is run this thing up in the air. We're going to go ahead and pull the heat shields off of that manifold from down below. Take a look at it visually, see if we have broken bolts or if we have a crack in the manifold. And then we will be taking action from there to remedy the situation. So stay tuned because this is going to be a very good Doge Ram 1500 5.7 Hemi V8 video. Okay, so we're clearly not going to work on any exhaust with the engine running, so pew, let us power this unit down. Uh, as you can see, I've already got the rack set up. We did a preliminary visual inspection uh, on other mechanical systems on this Dodge. Okay, the green subscribe button has been fully engaged. The Doge is on its way up. Let's go ahead and get right into it. I'm going to go after this right side exhaust manifold. We're going to pull the heat shield slash cover off of it and gain some visual access so we can see if we have broken bolts in the head or we've got a crack in the manifold or something of that nature. Okay, one more knot. There we go, let's set her down on the locks. For some safety, slowly coming down. Locks engaged. Good to go. Okay, so coming in from behind here, we can see there's our catalytic converter, part of the Y-pipe assembly converter over here on the other side. And if we take a little bit gander up right here, we can see the manifold assembly and the, uh, the heat shield, which is keeping us from seeing what we're trying to see here. So what I need to do is get a hold of those, uh, those little 10 millimeter nuts on the heat shield. We'll pull those nuts off, take a look at this manifold, and then determine what we, uh, what we must do to remedy the leak. Okay, so we're doing the reach up here method here. We're gonna get a hold of those tens. There's a bolt, or I'm sorry, a nut over these uh, over these studs here. So we need to pull the nuts off the studs. And then we can see about pulling the studs. But pulling the shield. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm looking and not really thinking of what I'm looking at here. I, I don't know, brain brain just kind of stopped functioning for a moment. Don't worry, I'll wake up. I'll get back to it. I think I was thinking about not breaking off the studs, trying to get these uh, nuts off of the studs. I think that's what I was thinking. And I don't know if this is coming out or if the stud's coming out of it. What well, seems to be a problem? Yeah, that uh, that one wasn't coming off. Let's try this one here. Unclick. Okay, that one turned. Power tool time. Since I'm clearly not breaking these studs off, here we can kind of speed this up a little bit with some some power. There we go. Ooh, hot, warm, warm. That was a little warm. Okay, what's happening up here is the stud is turning. Real out of gravity. And the nut is not turning. Oh, well, hey, I think I found the problem right there. That one's already broken off. It's a pre broken bolt right there. So that stud's busted right off clean. Okay, so we're, we're kind of getting somewhere here. Now we got something broken. Let's get the uh, front two nuts off and get this, uh, this heat shield away. Okay, so around on the front side, I'm gonna reach in through the fender. I'm gonna try to get those uh, remaining two bolts off for the heat shield here. Nuts. 
nuts, trying to get the nuts off. Okay. Here's one of them. And so that's three. And the last one, I can kind of barely see it through there. It's a, something of a tight squeeze. We may have to go around, yeah, back to the back side again, I think. How do I expect myself to extract broken bolts out of here? And I can barely reach what I'm trying to reach. Not good. Aha, I can see it from uh, below the steering gear. There's that last nut. You guys can't even see what I'm doing. I can't see, you can't see, we can't feel it. We can't hear it. We're just working on a dodge blind here. But I did manage to get all of the heat shield fasteners unfastened. All right? Yeah, look, there's that broken one. I'm out, shield. It's so close yet. So far away. There we go. Freedom has been achieved. Come here. Okay, so confirmed we have one broken bolt at least right there. See that guy? So that needs to come out of the head, which means we're probably gonna have to pull the uh, this whole shebang off of here. Yeah, right here's the hole right there, and I can see the bolt down at the bottom of it. Okay, that must be extracted. Okay, so we've got a series of 10 millimeter uh, bolts right here and a couple 13s. So I'm just gonna go through uh, one at a time and try to crack these loose. Uh, fingers crossed, I'm hoping none of them decide to break off on me. So we should, uh, they should go swimmingly and smoothly if they, as long as they don't break. If we get broken bolts, then well, I gotta weld nuts to them and then unbreak them. Okay, that one's loose. So what I'll be doing here is getting all these loose kind of by hand and then I'll come back through with the electric ratchet and just finish them off. I already got that one stuck pretty good. My socket, give it back. And it's that 10 mil elusive little creature. Let's get this studded 13 right here. Ooh, that was stubborn. Now, this bolt's counterpart on the top is the one that had broken off. So, hoping uh, this one Ooh, that didn't feel good. It turned and then kind of stopped. I might break this one off, guys. You need lubricant. I'm gonna throw some lube on there and then work this one back and forth and back and forth. We need to let the lubricant kind of wick in. Something's going on with that one there. Okay, let's get some penetrating oil in here. Not sure how well it's gonna penetrate. I'm trying to go up and into a hole. But it's some lube or some oil is probably better than nothing. So what I'll do, we're gonna get a, get a straight wrench on there if I can and just sort of walk this thing back and forth. That straight wrench is not gonna work. Nope, need a, need a socket. See, this is a, what I would describe as the, the non-plan plan. One of those situations where if you think you're going to plan your way out of it, you're going to be wrong because you have to adapt your plan. And if you know you're probably going to have to adapt your plan, it makes sense to just be on the on a non-plan. Therefore, I like to be on the non-plan plan. Hey, look, it's turning. So I either broke it off or it's going to come out. I want to go with option A 
or, or option B, not broken off, it's gonna come out. Yeah, I like option B better. It's good. This should uh, get a little bit easier once we move up top and go through the fender well. Uh, wrong way. I meant to take that out, not put it back. There we go. That one's out. Good. I guess while I'm here, we'll hit these last two tens back there. Get these guys out. And then we'll go get the flange bolts out and then go up top. Neutral drop. Or not. And all of this hardware uh, is going to be replaced, by the way. They ordered a whole new set. Okay, that's those on the back side. Uh, looking for uh, 15 right here to get the Y pipe off. And then we'll uh, go through the fender well and get the top bolts next. Lubrication is our friend. Go. Oh good, that's turning. Oh good, yep, come on out. Nice and easy like. Save this for later. Okay, let's get out from underneath here. I'm gonna go back around and in through the wheel well where we can get a hold of the top bolts and the top bolt on the flange over there. Then we can pull this manifold off and uh, see about extracting that broken bolt inside of the head. Okay, so again, with some penetrating oil, we're gonna hose these uh, bolts down for what effort it's worth as much as possible. There's a couple spots where it appears they're gonna sink in, or it might sink in and touch the threads, but it couldn't hurt, so we're doing it. Let's see, well, I wanna go ahead and just get that rear flange cracked loose. Kind of a tighter squeeze on the top side, and I don't know if my ratchet is, oh. Hey, I lucked out, it's not actually very tight. Okay. Well, anyway, I don't know if my ratchet's really going to give me the space here I need for some turning action. I might just have to switch to like a ratcheting wrench. Yeah, that's not going to cut it. Okay, low pro ratcheting wrench coming in here. We'll get that top flange bolt backed away. Nice and easy. Look at that. I like this not rusted Dodge. Okay, give it back. Thank you.
All right, panning off to the right here. Let's get the uh, that studded 13 first. We'll work on that one. Just want to crack it loose. I'm going by feel. If these if these things feel like they're going to start to bind up, I have to stop and kind of work it back and forth until the threads break free from the aluminum. And that one's doing well. She's turning. That's good. Let's switch out from the 13 to the 10s. Ah, that one turned. Good. This one, it's a little rough. We'll go back the other way. Go back again. Just kind of work them back and forth. There we go. That one turned. It's in good shape. That'll come out. And then the last one is this uh, 10 mil up here on the front. I think that's the last of it. Ooh, yeah, baby. She turned. That's good. Good, 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 good. Excited now. missed one down below it's a an elusive 13 that makes me sad I was kind of excited that I had already achieved a victory and gotten all of them and I saw that 13 down there okay Ooh, she turns good okay my, my victory is still here so far okay, let's get that 13 that was hanging out at the bottom down there, that elusive one that evaded me. Uh, no. Okay. And then one 13 and one more 10. I think that's all of them. I think, I hope, I hope I think I say. Drop that one. Okay, last one I think. There she is, manifold is free. Victory is close. gasket and then the manifold she's gonna come right through this hole right here sort of got he okay so looks like our cylinder in the rear is the affected unit that's the leaker you can see all the, the burnt areas where the soot was building up and right here that's the uh that's our broken stud so next i need to extract this stud from this cylinder head without uh without total destruction okay so real quick i'm gonna make one attempt to do this and one attempt only before i break out the welder uh, i'm gonna drill a hole here and we'll try to use an easy out extractor uh, if at any point it does not go perfectly, I'm going to stop and we're going to weld a nut to it and that'll be the end of it. Sound fair? I think so. And no, I don't need left-handed drill bits. It's the most impractical way imaginable to do this. Left-handed drill bits.
Okay. Okay, so now I have this little little divot right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and try to rotate this fastener. It's not working, it's not gonna turn. Yeah, that little divot there is just enough for a punch to act against it in order to try to turn that stud. And again, if it doesn't turn easily, I'm gonna give up and weld some stuff to, together here. Okay, she's not turning. I'm gonna weld a nut to it and that's gonna be the end all be all here. So since we're welding and that exhaust valve right there is open, go ahead and shove uh, something flammable inside of the hole. Protect the valve. There we go. Yeah, why not? We'll shove some in the exhaust too. Good. Okay, so we're gonna need a ground for the uh, for the welder here. So I'm just gonna stick a bolt right on in that other hole there. And that's gonna give us a decent ground to connect the uh, the welding machine to. So we'll just clip that guy on like right about like so, I think. Get that good and tight and make a nice connection. There. Now, the methods of this uh, can become uh, more extravagant depending on how difficult it is. So I'm just gonna start off the easiest way possible. Uh, no washers or candle wax or any of that. We're just gonna hold this nut up to it and I'm gonna come in and try to weld it to the stud. Now, these cylinder heads are aluminum. Therefore, my MIG welder should not be welding onto the aluminum. It should only strike its arc on the steel. So I really have no fear of uh, damaging the head. What I'm gonna do here is put a little bit of a bead on the end right here and we're gonna build this up some in order to fit uh, the nut over it and I can weld the nut on. All right, safety squints engaged, bright lights. Yeah, we're sort of building that up a little bit. Now I can fit this nut over top and I should be able to weld that guy onto the bead we just created and then use a wrench to pull the broken stud out. unit heat up. That's a multiples of hundreds of degrees. Okay, so now I need to let this cool ever so slightly. I'm gonna go in here with a wrench. And we're gonna try to work that broken stud out of the cylinder head. I believe that was 14 millimeters. Yeah. That's what it looks like to my eyeball. Ooh, is this gonna be nice and easy? That turned very, very simple, very easily. Oh yeah, she's gonna come right out. A little bit of heat, and some lube, and... We got a decent victory going here, guys. 
I must say, I think uh, I think this is a win, a major win. As long as this comes out all the way, we're in good shape. And it stopped. That's that's cute. I had to say something, didn't I? Just keep wiggling. If you meet resistance, just work it back and forth. Everything inside of me wants to reach out and grab that and just turn it. See, it's not red, so my my brain tells me it's no longer hot. And that's a lie. My brain's a liar. Okay, running out of patience. I'll just suffer through it. It won't burn that bad. I don't have any nerve endings anyway. Yeah, there we go, look at that. Yeah, all good. Okay, that's our broken uh, unit. Let's pull our uh, plugs back out. And now we can get the new gasket in place and get the manifold back together. So, Here's how I'm gonna to choose to put this back together. I've got just a couple of generic studs here and I'm gonna slide these studs in and use these to locate uh, my components like the gasket and the actual manifold. That way I'm not trying to keep all this stuff lined up uh, and fit it into position at the same time. See that? Okay, that's our gasket. Back it up some and we'll sneak that manifold back into position here. So listen, you guys might hate me for this, but I'm gonna save my guy a couple hundred bucks. So using this uh, lift pretty much as a straight edge, we can see there's a bit of a gap in there. See that? So if I were to hold this flush on the center two ports, a little bit of air gap behind the top, but a lot of bit of air gap down here on the bottom. So that tells me there's some slight warpage on this head. Uh, what I need to do to flatten this out a little bit is I'm gonna take down this surface and this surface. Now I'm not a machine shop, and I think that what I'm about to do is a better alternative than replacing the manifold. What I'm planning on here is gravity. And I'm going to go ahead and take a belt sander and I'm going to knock down this edge and this edge. That way it brings the center farther down and it'll allow for a better contact hatch on this rear section over here. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm no machine shop and there are better ways to do this, but what I'm doing with the belt sander will be sufficient. I've done it before. It will work. Not going to be a problem. Heavy belt sander coming in for the win. It's got, I think, like an 80 grit on the bottom of it. It's pretty nasty stuff. Very shinyish looking. So, let's straight edge this again against the lift. And we're getting less of an air gap. And I need to knock down 
a little bit more on this one right here. This one needs knocked down some more. Right there. I did these two just to make it shiny again. Okay, so let's go check the fitment again. And keep in mind, if you don't like this, I could have done nothing and doing nothing would have been uh, less effective than what I'm doing right now. So so there's that, that's, that's what we're gonna go with. I need to knock down this one right here just a little bit more that one needs knocked down some after this one that's probably about as good as it's gonna get and we're gonna go ahead and install it Much more better. I still see a little bit of gap. There it is, you see it. But it's not as uh, as profound as it once was. A little bit of gap right here as well. But that will, uh, that'll flex out of it when we torque it down. And if it doesn't flex, the, uh, the elasticity of the gasket material will take up the slack. So I think this is gonna be A-OK, -okay, no problem. Okay, manifold coming in. Let's get this guy in position. I'll slide it over those two temporary studs that I have in there. And then we can proceed to get the bolts in. And we'll torque this thing into place. I need to pry bar the exhaust backwards ever so slightly. It's taking up some of my clearance area that I need to fit this hole over those studs there. Get on there, please. There we go. Oh, come on. Why did you do that? We were so close. Get on there. I don't know. Nah, gravity got me. It's just being difficult. Now, nah, Dave, I got her, sir. We're, we're in. Didn't want to slide over that stud. That was my deal. Okay, let's get, uh, let's start getting some bolts in place here. So this thing stays put. There's one of the studded bolts for the heat shield. And then the other. That guy's in, good. Get my pry bar out of here now. 
Here I shall pull the studs out next. Or, or not, maybe. Wrong combo, I guess. Too much extension. Save these for later. There's one new bolt coming in. Get in there, bolt. Okie dokes, next one coming in out front, I believe, right uh, right there in that location. That one's in. We've got another studded unit. That one goes out back and below. Let me reach up in here. Okay, another regular bolt down below that. And then the other studded one is gonna go, uh, that's up front ah, on the ground. That one tried to hit me in the noggin. This one goes up front right down here. And again, that's for the heat shield. I meant to throw that. There, there it is again. Where's that hole? Poking around. I cannot find it. There it is. Okay, get this guy threaded. Once that one's uh, threaded in a little tighter. We can get them all uh, run down and snugged up and torqued in. Very good. Good, good, good. All right, time to start getting after it. Got the 13 here. What I'm going to do is run them all down with the electron ratchet, and then I'll come back uh, by hand with a, a wrench or a regular ratchet. Fly final torque. Even though the amount of torque this thing delivers is probably sufficient for my uh, the purposes here. Okay, that's the 13s. Now we get the 10s. They're down below, we're tough to see them. We're not gonna go back down there. Just gonna watch it from up here. That's a 13. Nickage.
Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, going back to the flange on the pipe. Let's get the let's get that guy tightened up next. The bolts are already in. I put them in there when you guys weren't looking. And bottom one. Yeah, that's nice and tight. Okay, let's go back with a wrench and hit the remainder of these uh, fasteners here. Make sure they're on good torque and then uh, we'll get the heat shield in place. 10 milli socket. Good. That feels good. There is Loctite on these. They came with it, by the way. I think that's that initial like crack that we're getting when I go to tighten them. That's the Loctite coming, like, breaking loose a little bit. So that's four here in the center. Let's get this one in the front here and that's the last of the 10 mil sized there we go socket change to the 13 that one's good that one's good and the two out back Oh, that one's good. What's that last one? There it is. Mix. Cool. Heat shield. Cool. Now it is uh, heat shield time. Let's get that thing back in position and uh, I think we're, we're about good to go here. But before we start thinking about that heat shield, I should probably get all this penetrating oil off of here because it's gonna smoke like the dickens when we restart it. So let's get that cleaned up next, then we'll get the shield in position. Nice and shiny. Goodbye, penetrating lubricant. Very good. Okie dokes, heat shield's coming in. We just need to slide, slide the holes in the heat shield over the studs that we put in. And then put the, uh, the nuts on to bolt it down to nut it down. There we go, fasten it down, that's what we're doing. Yeah, how come you can bolt things down but you can't nut them down? It seems like if you attach it with a bolt, you're bolting it, but if you attach something with a nut, you're, you're still bolting it, when you probably should be nutting it, right? I yeah, just saying, it's the complications of the English language. So here we're gonna nut that down right there. And then one more in the back, down low. Come here. Thread. Get on there. For real? Uh, yeah. Yeah, another. Try this one backhanded. 
There we go. Now thread it on. Good. Okay, a little more 10 mil action. Wrong way. Did you see that? Ratchet turned around. That was silly. That one doesn't fit. Or it's rusty crusted. We're gonna get another one. So yeah, that one got halfway down and said, yeah, no thanks. Um, I'm not gonna go over there. Not in the mood. Beautiful. Okay, that is one heat shielded pre-installed manifold. Alrighty, so I'm thinking before we put the fender liner back in, let me let this thing down and we can go ahead and restart the engine right here, right now. And that will let us listen for uh, any potential leaks that might be present uh, in this exhaust right here. So we've got all the perimeter bolts tightened down, flange bolts are on, everything's looking good. Ready to rock and roll. Let's, uh, let's go hit the key and fire it up. Okay, George coming down. <laughs> All right, beginning engine starting sequence now. All right, good to go. I hear no exhaust leaks. Zip silt, not a zero. This is good. We uh, stick the flanges back in here. Make sure I can't feel any. Yeah, all is well. She's sealed up. This is fantastic. So uh, looks like all I've got left to do here is clean up some of my goodies, get the fender liner back in, and uh, this operation of this truck's gonna be good to go. So here, let's run this thing back up. Second chance green subscribe button. We'll bring her back up and get the fender liner in. All the way up, blue doge. Oh yeah, look at that, chooching off a uh, bunch of smoke from all that uh, oil we sprayed in there. A lot of it. Nasty. That's fine, this is a well-ventilated area. The fan, it's not fanning. What is this? Are we not plugged in, fan? Hmm. There we go. Get some airflow action. Full speed. Nice. Okay, fender liner maneuvering its way back in, and that's another flashlight down. Good thing these flashlights are durable. I can certainly uh, put a hurting on equipment. I don't mean to. I don't mean to abuse my stuff. It just kind of happens that way. go fender liner is all back in position a couple little fasteners here and there we're all set clicks more clicks and I got a couple over yonder Very good. Okay, fender liner is in position. We're bolted on. Exhaust leak is no longer leaking. I do believe, guys, that is going to bring uh, this particular video on this uh, particular problem to conclusion. Uh, let me know what you think about this thing in the comment section down below. Uh, do yourself, do you yourself happen to have a, ra a Ram Doge 
1500 with the exhaust leak and was your fix uh, as easy and seamless as this one because i do believe that with a little bit more northern rust uh this thing could have been a uh more difficult than what it was this is basically the best case scenario for what happens on these things and uh, i'm glad that uh that it went through with uh, without a hitch so guys having said all that as always and again i'd like to thank each and every one of you guys for watching this video if you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see more like it please consider subscribing to the channel it's free to you and it really helps me out that is what the youtube algorithm uses to determine whether or not to promote the content to other potential viewers so again that's good for me that's also good for them so guys i'm going to start babbling on in moments of shameless self-promotion so again and as always thank you for watching and most importantly before i go i'd like to remind each and every one of you guys to have yourselves a great day See you guys later, end of video, end of RAM, end of doge, end of exhaust leak, end of transmission.